new set of interop tests. Um, actually, I attended those myself. So it was quite interesting seeing it was around 14 or 15 uh, competitors all working together to try to get products interoperated. So it's kind of a, interesting to see all these competitors working together. Okay, on to our next presentation. So um, hopefully this will work. So, um, so Gail um, Rowe um, is the co-founder and chief technology officer um, of Intupix. He holds an electronics and mechanical engineering master's and PhD degree. In 2006, he co-founded Intupix, a spin-off, technology provided in the digital cinema and <coughs> broadcast industry. As Intupix uh, CTO, he's responsible or his responsibilities is to define and manage the company's research and development projects. Together with his Intupix colleagues, Gail has represented or has presented over 20 papers on security, watermarking, image compression, and reconfigurable design strategies, <coughs> cost-effective, low-power FPGA implementations. So I'll just sort of switch over the to our uh, go-to meeting and hopefully this works. <coughs> Slide. The, so the 
what's so 4K IP uh, live production start to be um, the direction of the broadcast industry. So 4K is everywhere. IP production is very important for scalability. So that's really the trend. So the first fact is the fact that 4K UHD TV needs more and more video bandwidth. It's quite simple. Um, four times more than full HD. Uh, six, uh, that's for the 4K UHD. 8K UHD is 16 times more than a, than a full UHD. So it's a lot more, more, uh, more and more bandwidth. And that bandwidth is not for free. So it's start to cost a different level. So that's the reason. So on the next slide, you will see that um, you have a kind of exponential bandwidth growth. So you move from HD to UHD 4K, UHD 8K. You increase the number of frames per second. Um, and you need um, <coughs> to manage more and more video stream uh, at production level. So it's a lot of different uh, increase in complexity. Um, as, uh, and, and therefore, uh, for a cost point of view, some, uh, uh, some innovation has to be done there. So if you take a look to the small table here, you see that uh, the 1080i 60 will be uh, one uh, HD API link. A full HD 60 will be two uh, HD API or single 3 API. But if you take a look, for example, to uh, 8K 120 uh, key format, uh, it will be above 64 105 gigabit per second uh, link. So it's a lot of video link for a single image format. So, so the, in the next five years from now, the industry will face a lot of a very important challenge in the sense that the number of video stream and the number of pixel that has to be transported would increase in a dramatic way. So we have to find a solution for that. So if you go to the next slide. So the um, so uncompressed storage and transmission can become unfordable and unmanageable within the system and the current infrastructure. So uh, if, if we need to upgrade the current infrastructure from HD to 4K, uh, it will be an important investment in terms of hardware. It will be also an important renewal, an heavy renewal of the current infrastructure, like uh, cables. And also the, the increase of power will be very important because the storage, <laughs> the server, will consume more power if you move from HD to 4K. It's simple, it's simple as that. Um, if you go to the next one, the next slide. If you imagine this, uh, um, <coughs> in an alternative to uncompressed um, storage and transmission would be a lightly compressed storage and transmission. In that sense, if you do that, the, the, the infrastructure and as well as the, the system can remain affordable and manageable. So it means that on the field, it's possible to do some low-cost firmware upgrade or hardware upgrade at infrastructure the infrastructure can remain the same or can be lightly upgraded in the sense that all the cables can remain there, uh, but you just need to compress in front uh, before the transport and after the, the, the transport, and you can keep your power consumption uh, as the current HD infrastructure. So that's the reason why from a bandwidth point of view, we think that using lightly compression uh, for the transport and the storage is a good move for the industry. So on the next slide, the second fact for live uh, IP, uh, 4K live IP production, is the fact that the world is still, uh, the production in broadcast is still done with LTI interface. 
and not yet fully done with proper IP. It's already still done over SDI interface. So the broadcast industry made recently the investment uh, for treaty SDI. A few broadcasters made that investment already. Are they ready to move to 12 gig SDI? That's really a, 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 a very important question. So on the next slide. So massively right now, it's, it's mainly HDSDI that is deployed on the market. A uh, few people use 3 gsdi Is it really realistic to move to 12 gig SDI or to, to use 4 3 gig SDI for 4K transport? That's really the challenge. So um, have, having 4 3 gsdi will cut a lot for um, infrastructure upgrade. Moving to 12 gig SDI will cost a lot for equipment upgrade and for infrastructure upgrade as well. So uh, there is a huge challenge uh, for the, the future of, of SDI concerning that. So on the next slide. So if so the, 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 we show here that if again we think that a lightly compressed um, a solution is feasible, we think that um, if we compress in a large in a light way uh, the 4K content, then we can compress uh, transform that 4K content on a single 3D SDI. If we do that, uh, the great advantage if we do that with a good quality then we can keep the current infrastructure uh, in place and we can easily upgrade on the field. So, um, but for that, we need to ensure that the compression will work well with all the production that, uh, we, we need to ensure that uh, that compression will meet the key requirement to operate a production infrastructure. So it means that latency quality, uh, error robustness has to be part of the compression. So on the next slide, the, the third fact is the fact that the broadcast facility moves to IT. Um, so they, there is a uh, huge trend to move to, to IT for scalability, for um, cost reason, for uh, upgradability. Um, but the main challenge today with over IT is the fact that 4K doesn't fit into a single 10 gig port. So it means that if you need to, to um, if the industry wants to move to 10 gig uh, to IT transport, a single 10, 10 gig will not transport the 4K content. And that's not ideal, ideal for the, the market adoption. So if you go to the next slide. So why from SDI to, to over IT? It's quite simple. Um, the reason of that is, is, is due to time. Well, by doing so, the broadcaster will keep, uh, will use standard IT technology. It will be agile, flexible, um, to reconfigure or scale the, the global workload. Um, it will ease the, the management of multiple format, video formats. It will ease also the, the interconnectivity between uh, equipment. So we call that ambitious accessibility. Um, on top of that, the, the preferred interface will be 1 gig and 10 gig uh, Ethernet. In the future, it will be 40 gig and 100 gig. But the, the reasonable, um, the switch at, at the affordable cost, I would say 1 gig and 10 gig are in the, uh, are present right now. Um, what do we see? Uh, we see also that today, um, 702256 uh, is taking the lead for uh, video, uncompressed video over IP uh, transport. 
we need for pound to pound, but all the standardization uh, being done by VSF Senti goes in the right direction for um, uh, live switching, uh, uh, so that all the production can be done over IT. And uh, as a live bullet point, as I said, 4K doesn't fit into a 10 gig network. So that's not ideal, and uh, that's the reason why we recommend to use a live key compressed solution. So on the next slide. So, so we see that we, we have a strong feeling today that we need a lightly compressed 4K to fit a single 10 gig cable. The best approach uh, would be to, to have um, to leverage the already deployed 20, 20, 22, 5, 6 uh, standards um, and equipment and to put not three HD stream but three 4K stream on a 10 gig uh, network. So it means that if you have such a kind of vision, you need to compress by a factor of 4 to 1 and to reuse the current uh, equipment and to enable to the equipment to transport uh, uh, 4K content without uh, changing the infrastructure. So on top of that, uh, the, the codec, the compression, if the compression is mathematically lossless or close to mathematically lossless, that's also very good in a sense that a single 4K stream can just uh, be transported on the 10 gig network without any use of quality. And finally, we think also that IP is um, IP network is very close to software walls, so we we need to ensure that this connect has to be written in software and also in hardware. So it's very important to be to have a real time software and hardware codec uh, to to meet the challenge. So that's the, so the, showing the three facts here. We we say that rather the, the we are, we are going to show to you why Ortico technology, so it's a technology in algorithm developed by Intupix, um, why we think that this Tico technology can meet uh, the challenge. So, so Tico, the unique, what's the unique features of Tico? And I will benchmark that versus GPEG 2000 because uh, most of you are familiar with GPEG 2000, so I will benchmark that with the uh, uh, TICO is not, uh, first of all, I just want to mention that TICO is not a, um, a, not, it's not a, a competitor with GPEG 2000. For us, TICO is an alternative in some cases, of, uh, and TICO is very, very complementary with GPEG 2000. To give you a, a quick um, Vision, JPEG 2000 will be very good for 4K over 1 gig. But if you have to do 4K uh, uh, over 10 gig, we, we, we believe that uh, a Tico technology is more appropriate, and I, I will describe why. So, so what's the unique features of Tico? So it's a visually less quality codec, as JPEG 2000 can be. Um, but up to 4 to 1. Concerning JPEG 2000, JPEG 2000 can be used close to 10 to 1 uh, at visually less level, so that's the way it's used today with JPEG 2000. Tico, it will be only with only up to 4 to 1, no more than that. So from that, JPEG 2000 is better than, than Tico, definitely. But Tico is also robust against multiple generation of encoding decoding as JPEG, as JPEG 2000 can be. But a great advantage of TICO right now is the six extremely low latency. So right now the latency will be close to from 2 to 16 pixel line. 
So it's a very, very small latency. Uh, normally, an equivalent chip X2000 will be close to a one pixel latency. Uh, one, uh, sorry, one frame latency for chip X2000 in the context of TIPO will be close to few lines from 2 to 16 uh, video lines. So the latency is very, very small uh, for the TICO versus GP2000. From an FPGA point of view, the complexity of the TICO is extremely low. Uh, it's about eight times smaller than the GP2000. And there is no need of external memory. Uh, in JPEG 2000 runner, for every frame you compress or decompress, you need an external DDR3 memory. And that external memory increases the complexity and the cost of any other design. So the, the TCO doesn't need any external memory. Uh, only few land buffer and all the land buffer will be uh, stored within the FPG. On top of that, Tico is really fast in software. In software. That's not the case with JPEG 2000. Uh, in so, uh, doing 4K, 60K real time in software, it's at far, far too late, unfeasible in software. In GPU, it's possible, but in software, it's not possible with JPEG 2000. With the Tico, it's possible to do that in CPU. And that's really important for market adoption. Um, we can support a wide range of resolution. That's the same for JPEG 2000 as well. And in the TICO, we put some effort um, to, to have special mode for computer-generated content, uh, and especially text overlay and things like that. So that's, uh, that's unique features that we bring in the codec to support such a kind of content. And now, as a last bullet point, um, the, the codec has been designed for wide industry uh, deployment. So we, um, so we are in standardization process with the uh, uh, We were involved in the VESA Support Standardization Committee. Uh, we are also involved in uh, ISO standardization process rather. So, um, and we are working with um, industrial uh, to create a wide adoption of the of the codec for the industry. Uh, so for the next, um, so what's so what's the as a summary for the the twenty two fast six. So what's really the challenge for the twenty twenty two? 2022 uh, uh, video transport. You need to have uh, a solution that is, uh, you need to have a latency that is below a frame. That's clear. It has to be, uh, the latency has to be very, uh, it has to be LAN latency and not frame latency. So that's one challenge. You need also to, the compression, uh, need to, to have um, the right compression ratio to fit uh, the pad, so typically a compression ratio about 4 to 1. So a 4K uh, video format fitting, um, uh, if you want to put four, three 4K streams on a 10 gig uh, network, you need a 4 to 1 compression ratio. You need also to be visually lossless. Uh, you need to ensure that the quality of the pictures is well preserved, uh, better than GP2000 at 4 to 1 compression ratio. Um, and you need to have a low complexity uh, codec, a low complexity, because if the complexity from a hardware or software point of view increase, uh, the deployment of such a kind of technology will never occur. So, so as a summary, TICO will have few lines uh, latency, will have a fixed latency, and TICO will ease uh, the synchronization with audio, knowing that the latency is fixed and only few lines of latency, 
it will be quite easy to manage the synchronization with the view. That's for the, for the latency. Um, uh, Lee, can you go back? Yeah, sorry about it. So for the compression ratio, uh, 4 to 1 compression ratio, that's a good one. The, the codec will be also, that is also fixed. It's a fixed bitrate, so it's a fixed, uh, it's fixed CDR. So it's an exact CDR, it's, it, uh, so it will match exactly the compression ratio, 4 to 1, no more, no less. Um, so the, from a, a picture quality point of view, the codec is capable to compress in mathematically less less. It's also robust against multiple generations of encoding decoding. Uh, it's visually loaded on, on any type of content or different type of content, live content, but also uh, pathological content and, and um, uh, computer-generated content. And from a complexity point of view, it's low power, low cost, running in hardware and software, and can be redeployed on the field. Uh, because in most broadcast infrastructure right now, you have FPGA, and those FPGA can be re upgraded on the field because the, the, the TICO technology is very, very com low complex, low complexity. So an upgrade on the field is possible. So on the next slide, um, I will quickly describe the, the compression itself, the codec itself. So you will see that um, the codec is basically a, wave, a, a, a transform, a decorrelation uh, transform. It, basically, it's a wavelet transform uh, at JPEG 2000. Then we have a coding. Um, an entropy encoding that apply the, the that do the compression itself. Then we have a, a rate allocation system. It's a post rate allocation system. It's it's very similar to JPEG 2000 except that all the blocks here have been simplified. So um, JPEG, to, JPEG 2000 has a, fine. in JPEG 2000 you have a wavelet transform. You had you have a net cut and MQ and trophy encoder blocks and you have a post trade allocation system but all those blocks are much more complex than TICO. So on the next slide the wave it's the transform we use it's a more simple wavelet transform. So in vertical we don't have a five tree or that seven filter as typical two thousand we have only a two two filters. Uh, being lossless uh, filters, and in horizontal way, we have a five tree filters being again a lossless uh, filter, and by doing so, you reduce the latency of the transform, but you you reduce also the complexity of the transform. So that's for the the wavelet transform. On the next on the next slide. Then you have the, the, the entropy encoding, I would say. In JPEG 2000, all the data are entropy. You have an entropy encoder on all the data. So for 4K 60P content, you have more than 10 gig, 10 gigabit um, per second of data. And you need to compress on a bit per bit all those data. So it's a lot of complexity for doing uh, just for encoding all the data. In Tico, we don't do that. We uh, we split the data in two parts. Um, basically, the the GCLI uh, that's really the amplitude of the data, and the, and we uh, we split the data in two parts: the amplitude on one side and on the other side the data. The data itself are transported and compressed, but the amplitude is compressed. By doing so, um, more than 90% of the data is transported and compressed, and 10% of the data is compressed. And, uh, and if you do so, 
you can you keep your codec type. You have a very efficient codec in terms of complexity, and you you keep keep a good quality from a compression point of view. So um, uh, you can go to the next slide. So uh, then the last block is the rate allocation system. So how do we manage the rate allocation? It's quite simple. So um, if the image is uh, complex, so if you compress at 4 to 1 and the image uh, has some complexity, you will need to, to contact the signal. And how do you contact the signal? Simply as uh, dropping the LSD um, uh, value of the wavelet coefficient. So basically, the, in the raw data, you just drop LSD plane uh, of the wavelet uh, coefficient. And you do that in an iterative way until you reach your compression uh, target, your compression ratio target. So if you compress at 2 to 1, for example, and if you have a very simple image, like a black image, you will never contact your signal. But if you have a very complex image, like a noisy image, you will start to uh, remove uh, LAP big planes uh, from high frequency, uh, middle frequency, until you reach your target bitrate. Um, so, uh, and um, it's also important to mention that uh, the rate allocation system is very similar to um, it's very similar to JP2000 in the sense that you can do PCNR optimization or visual optimization. So on the next slide. So um, we are moving to the standardization. So uh, Tico has been proposed as a technology to the joint task force on professional network stream media. And we submitted an RDD uh, last November. So the process is, is ongoing for the safety RDD. Um, so at safety RDD, what's the project scope? So the, the goal is to describe the architecture of the Tico codec. Uh, which satisfies the above requirements. Um, we describe uh, our fixed, fixed and pixel line latency is, is ensured by the codec. And we also describe how to map uh, the TICO on 7022, uh, 5.6 or 1.2, or also on the ADI uh, infrastructure. So that's an ongoing pro uh, project for now. So uh, on the next slide, um, I will show to you the, the current status of the first implementation of TICO. So where are we right now? So we have a, a reference software showing the quality, and this reference software enables uh, the industry to assess the quality of the chicken and connect. On top of that, we have already uh, some FPGA TICO for encoder and decoder uh, running on Xanix on Altura. Uh, and this IP core can run in new generation, but also previous generation of chip. So this will ease the, the upgrade. Uh, the, the, this will the, the fact that we support old FPGA generation will ease the, the upgrade, the the the, 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 the yeah, the field upgrade of uh, equipment on the market. And finally, we have uh, a software, accelerated software version for the decoder, running only on CPU, being real-time for 4K, 60K on four cores. Um, so on the next slide, you can see here the, the software uh, performance uh, for the, the TICO on CPU on different resolution, 4K uh, or 2K. Um, it just, uh, as a quick summary, it's just important to mention that Tico uh, software is is faster than, um, it's probably 
it should at least two times faster than a VC2 uh, alternative and, pro and probably six times faster than a, a JPEG 2000 running in software. So that's the key advantage of Tico um, is the speed versus uh, VC2 and uh, JPEG 2000. On the next slide, um, from an implementation point of view uh, on order, uh, we focus to bring Tico, but we focus on uh, different uh, image formats, 422, 444, LGP, by different color space, 8, 10, 12, even 16 bits, resolution up to 4K, uh, up to 8K, sorry. Uh, for the compression, uh, I said that already, but it has to be sub intra frame, so a few um, lots of latency, um, a fixed latency. Um, exact CBR uh, compression ratio can be adjusted, and from a FPGA point of view, extremely low cost implementation without any external memory. It, it has to fit in the smallest FPGA, and get, uh, so that we can upgrade on the field. And um, and it's a single clock design, so that uh, the 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 Tico can be directly connect to the the, the video clock uh, from the transport point of view, so, so, it, so that it's, it can be it can avoid uh, it can reduce the complexity of the system at the end. So just as a benchmark, uh, if we compare today the Tico versus JPEG 2000 for 4K 60p uh, signal. Uh, uh, um, we show here the complexity versus the so FPT you have look at tables, register, DST, and block run. And here we show the complexity ratio between JPEG 2000 and the TICO. And you see that basically TICO is much smaller than JPEG 2000, no need of external memory, and uh, the co it's about eight times smaller versus uh, JPEG 2000. So that's the key advantage of TICO versus JPEG 2000. If you go to the next slide, you will see the same uh, an equivalent comparison with uh, versus VC2. So again, we see that you can see that uh, TICO versus VC2 is, is much smaller again. Um, it's, um, so we, are, we are here about 20-30% uh, of uh, complexity versus uh, VC2. So again, if you 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 think about an, an upgrade on the field, <laughs> it's very important to have a connect with a very small complexity. So on the next slide, um, the quality, that's very, very important for the broadcast um, um, market. So uh, we made a lot of different quality analysis. I, I will not cover all the details right now, but we made a check on natural image, test pattern, uh, pure size, desktop, fractal, gaming, math, many, many different content. And we made comparison of such a kind of, uh, of Tico codec with a VC2 or GP2000 uh, at 4 to 1 compression ratio. And we did uh, this in our uh, comparison, but we did also a subjective quality uh, analysis. Mm -hmm. um, uh, all the subjective quality analysis were done uh, at uh, different pixel per degree, so 30, 60, 90, 100 pixel per degree, um, and just putting people in front of um, uh, uh, high quality display um, at uh, compressing the pictures at 4 to 1 compression ratio and asking if the, the, uh, the, the attendants were capable to see a difference between the, the, the original image and the compressed image. So that's the way we did the subjective quality analysis. Mm -hmm. On the next slide, uh, we just show here the different kind of content we used for the quality analysis. So you, you saw that we used uh, video sequence like EBU video sequence, 4K EBU video sequence. We used also some uh, 
pathological uh, content, uh, so many different uh, um, patterns, I would say, uh, text-based also, fractals, uh, zooplates, maps. Um, on the next slide, Um, we use also landscape, so that's more natural images there. Um, we use also um, uh, images combining uh, natural image, but also noise. So just to be sure that uh, the, the codec is correctly when you interleave noise and natural image together, uh, people uh, being um, uh, uh, an image where you have face of people, uh, people, uh, the people, people content. Then you have also some uh, animals and insect content desktop. Um, that's uh, that's illustrate basically all the kind of content we use to assess the quality of the codec. So finally. Um, I will conclude my talk and uh, show the next step about the TICO. So, the, as a conclusion, uh, in the big, uh, we think that broadcast uh, industry faces heavy investment to enable the transport of 4K video in a regular way. We believe that um, it's very important to use TICO or lightweight uh, video compression, especially when you need to do over IP transport or if you need to transport over the current API infrastructure. So 4K, to ease the 4K transport over API and IP transport, uh, we believe that it's very important to use a lightweight compression. And as unique uh, features, TICO um, will uh, ease the transport of, of 4K uh, content over the current 3D API, uh, and uh, so Tico will be the perfect solution to transport the 4K content over a 3D API, but also over a 10D network. Um, with Tico will be directly compliant with SMC 202256, will be directly compliant with SDI mapping. Uh, it will be an easy a grid of hardware and software uh, that's very important for field upgrade and deployment of the codec. And uh, we are working right now with the SMT to, to make a standard of that uh, compression scheme. So what's the next step? Um, so we are in a 4K trial and demo uh, since uh, more than a year right now. Um, we are in the phase where we so some quality assessment is performed by many partners, broadcasters, and equi equipment manufacturers. Uh, we'll have the first software and FPGA IP core uh, being shown at NID by us, but also by uh, manufacturers. Um, we are um, so as a, at Interpix, we provide FPGA um, uh, IP calls um, to, to enable that uh, market adoption. And uh, we are still working in the RDD draft, and this draft will be completed by August 2015. Um, and uh, this draft uh, will be uh, open um, with uh, many uh, broadcaster and uh, OEM manufacturers uh, for and uh, and that RDD will cover how to map Tico on 3D API, how to map Tico on NPEG 2 ts but also how to map Tico on the SMT 2256. So that's that's it for my presentation. We have too much feedback here. Thank you, Gail. Um, do we have any? No, yeah. How's that? Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll just to mute you temporarily. Um, do we have any questions for Gail? 
Go ahead. Oh. Um, I work. <laughs> All right, give me the mic so that Gail can hear you, and then I'll have to unmute them. Hi, uh, thanks very much for the presentation. Um, I, I really do support the idea of lightweight compression being important for moving forward on electrical interfaces. Um, you did comparison to um, J2K and VC2. Uh, you mentioned that you participated in the VESA efforts for display stream compression. I'm wondering why you didn't compare TICO to the already deployed standard of DSC that's being used in MIPI and DisplayPort and uh, um, it's, it's a very good remark. Uh, it's, uh, we did that analysis as well um, uh, versus DC uh, and Veda. Uh, you're right uh, about that. Um, right now, uh, we didn't disclose that uh, to, but for, for the moment, um, from what we see, uh, the broadcast industry is not uh, too, too much looking for the EC right now. That's, that's what we, we think. But basically, I just want to mention that in the context of the EC, the current standard is mainly focusing at 3 to 1 compression ratio and not really at 4 to 1. There is open work right now at the EC to move to 4 to 1 compression ratio. But I think the challenge for this industry in the broadcast right now is more to have a four to one compression ratio. And that's the reason why we are um, 